Hi, everyone. I am Cindy Barron, and I am sitting in here uh, as your host for Eric Rhodes, who has been on an amazing trip, and he's going to be telling you all about it in the future. So um, I'm kind of envious of it. But today I'd like to introduce you to, uh, this is right up my alley because I, I love how Calvin Lie paints. And I'm going to introduce you to Calvin Lie. I think he's amazing. And when he, he does figurative and portraits and um, cityscapes, and this is right up my alley, especially with these figurative drawings. I love that realism and that impressionism and that abstract. I love all of that uh, doing it. So let's introduce you to Calvin Lai. Hi, how's it going? Hi, Calvin. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you heard that, but I love the way you paint those figurative drawings. I, you know, I love the impressionistic realism, the abstract. I love all of that when doing that. And yeah. I, I also noticed I'm gonna, I want to tell viewers, you got to go in and read your bio and visit your, your website because it is so inspirational. I read your bio and I went, wow, you know, I mean, it's, it's, um, you did it. You're following what you want to do. And, um, it's, it's a great read. And besides that, you got to look at, at his work. So it's oh, thank you very it's, much. That's very kind of you. you so, know, I so what are you going to show us today? Uh, well, today I'm going to show um, basically an easier way of rendering hands, or at least a way of rendering hands that I feel that is a little bit more understandable besides, uh, you know, rendering each detail um, painstakingly out. Uh, because, you know, I mean, the hand is very complicated. There's uh, 27 bones in it and there's all these, you know, the fingers and the joints and everything like that. And a lot of times it's very confusing for people yes. when they uh, draw or they paint it. And uh, so I'm going to show the way that I approach it, which I think is a little bit easier and uh, understandable in terms of approaching how to render hands. Oh, that sounds fun. I love that. I remember back in, uh, gosh, in high school or something, the teacher would have us like hold one hand and, and yeah. draw with the other one. And yeah. uh, that was a great exercise. But I'm so looking forward to this. Like I said, I love visiting your work. You're a San Francisco artist. Thank you. So yes. I think your work is, it speaks to me. It, it really does. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Well, so, thank you. I'm very honored. I'm very honored to hear you say that. Well, I'll let you get set up and I'll do okay. some uh, little work here and then I'll be right back and we can get started. Sounds good. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Hi, I'm back. And let me tell you about um, uh, today's prize. Today's prize is a one-year digital, digital subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. Love that magazine. And uh, all you have to do is tell us where you're from in the comment um, area and um, to win the prize. Last show's uh, winner was Mark White from Casa Grande, Arizona. And uh, so all you have to do is um, go to, to the um, website and then tell us um, um, how to get it to you. And the gift for today is a free ebook, 10 Steps to Become a High-Level Figurative and Portrait Artist. And you know what? We're working with somebody today. So it's that this is, this is something you, you would be interested in. Go to... Um, uh, realismtoday.com ebook and it's printed right on here on the screen and you'll be able to see how to um, uh, how to download it so you know this is right up our alley and what we're doing today so that will be um, that will be fun and you're gonna enjoy today's demo like I said go to his website and it is uh, amazing and his um, I enjoyed the read also. So you got to read his bio. Very, very nice and inspirational. So let's go back to Calvin and 
let's get started. Hi, Calvin. Hi, how's it going? It's going. Oh, I see that. Um, um, okay, what? explain what type of surface and all of that. I'm going to let you talk and then sure. I'll... Sure, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, what I'm going to be using today is just simple canvas board, uh, since it's just to kind of show uh, an exercise or the way that I would approach this. Um, you know, once again, you know, I mean, of course, surfaces are really important you know, to paint on, I think. Uh, usually I would paint on wood panel or the gesso board from, uh, the, you know, gesso to hardboard panel. So, but today is just going to be some canvas board. And um, you could also just use a piece of canvas yourself just, uh, just to kind of get this um, uh, concept down. And you have it toned, I see. Yeah, yeah. When I, uh, usually when I work with oil paints, I tone the canvas with some sort of, color not necessarily gray sometimes i use a burnt sienna because i like just the vibrancy of the burnt sienna to come through mm -hmm. uh, but this time i just wanted to have it in gray uh, just to you know, um, kind of be copacetic with the black and white paint that i'll be using because this will be a, a black and white demo oh i like that yeah. I saw on your website, you have some charcoal, uh, you have um, a page with charcoal drawings. I love stuff like that. So this oh, is the <laughs> Yeah, the, the, I, 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 charcoal drawing I, is actually, uh, I think probably in terms of dry medium, it's the closest to painting, I think, in terms of all the dry medium. So I, I love doing charcoal drawings. That is the way I started out, charcoal and pen and ink. And yeah. uh, uh, way, way, way back when, high school, actually earlier than that. So um, it's a great way to start out and learn. It's it's great studies. And, and you almost need to do that quite a bit just to keep your creativity up. It's important. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, I mean, it's it's it really informs each other. You know, uh, I mean, I started off with pencil and pen and ink, much like you. I didn't get to charcoal until later, but I, you know, all of it really informs each other. All the drawing is you know, informs the painting, and the painting informs the drawing. For sure. Yes, and very important, very important. You said it well. Definitely. Um, so uh, I guess I shall begin. And so, um, I see your reference on the bottom. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So if you notice the reference, uh, okay, so this hand is, I guess some would consider kind of complicated. I mean, you're, you know, it's bending in certain ways and all that sort of stuff. But one of the things that I think people should look at the hand in terms of sections. So you have the back of the hand, then you have the uh, first um section like where the uh, knuckles and the first digits are and then you have basically uh, the rest of where the knuckles the mid knuckles are to the tips of the fingers um, I always look at it as in sections so uh, and just shapes instead of rendering all the different parts of the hand and everything like that what I just basically concerned with right now is angles as well as shapes. So if I were to start rendering, now I always render when I'm painting with a, uh, with a brush. I begin and end everything with a brush. Um, everyone's different. Everyone, you know, has their own way of approaching how they, uh, how they, uh, uh, you know, begin. Some people do it with charcoals. Um, you know, some people do it with pencils. I always, uh, I always had trouble uh, integrating uh, pencil and charcoal drawings with my painting. I wasn't understanding painting, so I just forced myself to use a brush. So um, this is basically the back of the hand. You know, if you see, you know, it from the, from the, um, 
reference photo. So right here, I, I come to this point, and this is where the knuckle is. This is basically where the first section is that I'm talking about, the back of the hand. And if you notice where the knuckles are, the knuckles go in a certain angle. So you can just use a reference. This is basically a reference line. That's where the knuckles would line up. And then you can kind of continue the rest of the um, outline or uh, shape. Now, this second section right here would be like uh, is what I was talking about, where the knuckles reach the first digit. Um, this part is where the um, kind of where the knuckle is for the thumb. This is a good reference part because if you notice that this thumb knuckle and this knuckle for the um, a ring finger is very close in line. So you know that basically, basically the, uh, you know, the, the first knuckle for the ring finger will be somewhere around here. Now there's be a lot of adjustments, of course, that I need to do in order to, um, you know, make sure it looks correct, but that's basically it. So anyway, so this is, uh, where the first knuckle is for the for the fingers and you you know you kind of create a reference line as well you know kind of goes in this arc for the first digits right here so i mean you have like these sections right here and then the other section of course is this one and um you can kind of create like an arc i'm not worried about the space between the fingers yet uh because it's just like i just want to create like an i guess like a um, outline or a map of where everything could go uh once again you know some of this will need to be adjusted so you have like basically the shape of the hand you know the back of the hand the knuckles to the first digit and then the, the rest of the fingers is what i was talking about and uh of course you'll fill in the thumb you know basically right here this is so good for the viewers to see because you are helping them to understand, you know, uh, drawing techniques, but, you know, how to um, do something complicated because this is a complicated hand form, but I mm. have to tell you, it's a cool design. <laughs> you just, um, um, you just explained it well for the viewers to uh, figure out how to do that and to look at things differently. I like that. Oh, uh, um, 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 uh, thank you very much for the feedback. I appreciate that. I mean, uh, I always, uh, you know, when I, I had trouble, a lot of trouble with hands, um, you know, when I was, uh, you know, first starting. And it's because of the fact that they're complicated. And the only way that I'd be able to you know, break them down is to really simplify. I mean, in painting, I find that, you know, to simplify it and even drawing, you know, to simplify is the best way of approaching anything. And so that um you know I, I i appreciate hearing what you're saying um and so uh you know in terms of now filling in the detail uh you know you can start doing that you know, and um you know you can find where the knuckles are like you can even just guesstimate if you want uh one of them is here this would be for the middle finger you know and um this one here would be for for the uh, index finger. And uh, yeah, and, and I'm still not concerned about, um, about rendering each individual finger yet. I just really just am trying to get marker points so I know where the details are. There's that, there's, and right now it's like I'm, you know, I can kind of dance around a little bit in order to just sort of get, you know, just the mapping of everything. So it's like, you know, I mean, you can sort of see the shape of the hand coming together right yes. now. So, oh, good. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like I said, this one's complicated. Yeah, I, it's, it's I, a complicated. I love watching this, and I think it's great for everybody. Yeah, the um, 
I mean, this sort of way of approaching the hand can work for many different hand shapes uh, because, I mean, all you're doing is just breaking it down into sections and, you know, and then uh, then it's easier to see the detail uh, because, I mean, when you just try to like render each finger first, uh, it becomes overwhelming, I believe, yeah. for any artist. Yes. And so, and it's just like landscape painting also in in a way that um, if you just focus on one, if you're starting out a painting, you just focus on one area in a landscape, then you forget the other area and how they relate to each other. What you're doing is relating every shape that sh should be in the right place. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of anything that you're rendering, there's always a sort of self-referential way of approaching things. So like with landscapes or hands or faces or something like that, you know, one point will relate to another point. You can use those to measure and determine where the details are. Right. Um, and so I, I completely agree with you when it comes to, uh, you know, with what you're saying about landscape painting, because I mean, I do the same thing when I'm doing landscapes as well. And, um, and what you were saying as far as, you know, you're not just focusing on one finger, you're focusing on the whole shape. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's important. Yes, definitely. You know, I mean, like for landscapes, you know, I mean, there's a number of shapes, you know, that you can, you know, you have to focus on. Um, and so it's like, this is a uh, really uh, I guess this concept of simplifying can be really applied to anything. Um, and, and I do apply it to anything. Um, so right now it's just like, you know, I'm just basically filling in some of the, um, you know, uh, medium tones in order to um, just get a better, you know, feel and volume of the hand. Once again, I could have to go over some things. There's some darker areas. Right now I have the sun in my eyes, <laughs> so it's, it's a little hard to see right now, actually. I know the glare probably does it, although we're seeing fine. I, I you know, I do need to see fine. <laughs> good, good, good. But we're yeah, seeing that, fine. That's, that's, that's more important, actually, to be honest, you know. You're actually forming that hand as I'm sitting here. The, oh. the whole thing is just... Yeah, the um, you know, I mean, I I I just approach things like very um, you know, uh, I mean, th this is also, I mean, for the uh, lesson that I'm doing for Realism Live, I, it's basically go basically going from general to specific. So this is sort of the idea that I've approached this as well. I went from like a general general um, sketch of the hand. And now I'm just filling in specific details. And so I'm looking forward to Realism Live because I will be tuning into your your class. It's oh. um, I'm glad uh, I'm I'm glad you're in it. It's 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 like I said, I love your work. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll definitely be tuning into your class as well. You know, I mean, I oh, I, I love I love landscapes and you know I love all. You know, the... And it's. Only next this one coming Wednesday. Yeah, so coming up very soon. You know. So for here, um, and so just in terms of like using oil paints, uh, I guess I mean you can see that was a little bit of drag. I just needed a little bit more thinner uh, because at this point, you know, at the beginning I used. Uh, I guess this is just kind of based, uh, you know, in terms of tips for how to handle oil paints. Um, in the beginning, I used a little bit more of a dry brush, uh, mm -hmm. just 
sketching, but now it's like, I want to, you know, have a little bit more flow to everything. Um, so a viewer just asked again, you're using just black and white. Yes. Okay. Just using black and white. Yeah. Love that. Um, and all the various values you can make with that. Yeah. You know, I, I always, um, I always suggest if you're learning, uh, you know, uh, oils or any medium, actually, a uh, painting medium to just work in black and white at first, because uh, one of the things that's very confusing for people is, uh, you know, there's all these things you have to, like, uh, keep in mind. Uh, some of it is, you know, uh, of course, values and uh, but ha how to handle the medium is like one of the big ones. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you just kind of cut out like the whole issue of color, uh, it kind of gives you a little less of an intimidating, um, you know, uh, thing to approach. And so I always suggest working black and white at first, uh, you know, and then you can uh, go into color. Um, I mean, if you go into color, you know, first, you know, of course, you know, that's that's a great way to. <laughs> it's just like everyone learns differently. But um, no, but I, I agree with you. I think that's important because you can really learn the values, the, the uh, subtle value changes. It's, yeah. it's it's perfect. I think it, I think it's a great learning technique. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, I mean, it, it, some things are easier, I think, with color, strangely enough. But, um, you know, uh, I don't know, things like with hands and faces and, you know, still lifes and things like that, you know, I mean, it, it sometimes it's just benefits to just reduce the amount of things that you have to worry about. Um, well, Calvin, this is really, it's, it's, it's cool. This is, this is cool to watch. Oh, oh good. <laughs> we, we, we got a hand. I like it. <laughs> yeah, the hand is the hand is coming, you know. It's just you know, just I, I just trying to approach it really slow. Um, I mean, uh, there are uh, things that I like to do very quickly, you know. Um, like uh, I'm really big on quick studies. Uh, uh -huh. I feel like quick studies really help. Uh, where I try to finish something like in you know uh, anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. And, uh, you know, I think you learn a lot about, um, you know, a painting and what you're painting uh, with quick studies. Uh, but, um, but this, you know, I'm trying to just get like, you know, the feel of the hand, this is probably a little bit more right here. This is probably, so I mean, you just kind of just adjust things as you go along. Um, and it's easy to do more so with black and white than mm -hmm. it is to do with color, at, you know, and, until you understand color. So this, yeah. this is easier for, for everyone to understand with just the black and white. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I mean, this also is the same sort of approach uh, I would probably take with charcoal as well um, or anything now. Uh, I mean, when I started painting, it really changed the way that I, I, I drew. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I draw more painterly now. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, this is just something that you can just do in general um, because either way, whether you're, using charcoal or a pencil to render a hand, uh, the hand is always going to be uh, difficult. And so um, just being able to, uh, you know, do this you know, uh, with whatever medium you're, you're doing, uh, I think is a big benefit. And also one thing about like black and white is just, is just like you don't need to use a ton of brushes, you know. I mean, yeah. with color, I always use a ton of brushes. I mean, yeah. And they're all sitting in one, the other, the hand you're not working with, they're all. Yeah, in exactly. <laughs> yeah, my hands are always full of brushes when I'm, you know.
And I always use flat brushes. Uh, everyone has their own preference and there's no right or wrong with like brushes or anything like that. I, I really think it really has to do with uh, what you're comfortable with. But for me, flat brushes really work well. I don't know why, um, but I, do, I, I rarely use any rounds or anything like that. Uh, even for details, you know, uh, for a flat brush, I use like the corner um, yeah. point in, in order to like render some details. And so, but everyone's different in terms of that. And so it's like, I, I definitely um, am a, huge proponent of uh everyone having their own methods of doing things because uh i, I you know i think that's pretty much the, the, i mean there's so many different styles and everyone has different ways of approaching it right and you said that so nicely so yes i know all my brushes look very bad but <laughs> i have a array of brushes but i like them looking bad <laughs> yeah. so and I see your brushes look very nice. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I tend to like be pretty meticulous about how I clean them. But oh um, I'll never show you my brushes then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just so expensive, is the thing. And so it's like I gotta. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. So it's kind of forming right here, you know. I mean, like a. We can kind of, you know, do a little bit of a forearm if we want, you know, just sort of like real quick, just to give it some sort of like, you know, sense of what's happening. So I'm going into your brain here a little bit. Do you, you know, and plus I read it in your bio, um, <laughs> in, in the things that you wrote on your um, website. So your mind is always looking for that subject or that hand like it, this right here because it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful shape and i know me you know like certain things i'm attracted to if i'm mm. just drawing or whatever you know right. so you, you're always looking for something that inspires you to paint um right. or it. you know that that moves you um i love um uh I love what you wrote on there. You said, I collect moments. I mm. love that. Oh, and then the other one that I loved was um, you wrote, um, love what you, um, the mixture of medicine, meditation, and <laughs> growth. Uh, All right, that is so good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so obviously when you're out, you know, you can be in a public place or something and you're and somebody captures your your creative part of your mind. Do you approach them or do you do you have certain people you um, go to? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it's like uh, I um, I mean, that's the uh, what you've um, what you're relating to uh, and i think the reason why you can uh, relate to it is because i mean as as artists or anyone creative you know i mean you're always searching for some sort of inspiration yes. and so uh you know whether you know you like to do landscapes or people or both or whatever you like to do um but i mean uh yeah it's it's um it's kind of the uh I guess you could say the superpower of like an artist is like to be able to, you know, take those uh, things that you see and, and uh, you know, to try to capture it, uh, you know, through whatever medium you're using. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm always constantly looking and, um, you know, I've gotten uh, less shy over the years. And so it's like I'm able to just approach people um you know in terms of in terms of just asking them whether they'd be interested in you know, you know i mean being a subject and um yeah it's it, uh i uh i mean i'm i'm also very lucky because i have a lot of uh, you know friends who you know are willing <laughs> to <laughs> to be <laughs> able to, yeah. never hurts to have that <laughs> Well, I, I have to say this, you know, so I'm not I'm not offending anybody here, but I'm attracted to older people, mm. male, female, that has that that life is is 
etched in their face or you could see. Oh, yeah. And I love to draw those things. So that's why I asked that question, you know, like if I see somebody still, even though I don't do as much portrait drawing anymore, um, still somebody will cross my path and I go, oh, you know, should I ask? Can I? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I love uh, the subject matter. You just, I love that too. You know, uh, you know, people who, um, you know, have had experience, you know. Yes. And, you know, and who said it better than I said it. So, yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, the, uh, I love that. You know, I mean, it's like, it's such interesting faces, you know, and, um, you know, I mean, to be able to capture, you know, the, the essence of them, like, you know, is, is really just, you know, uh, you know, it feels, you know, you feel more connected to things when you're able to do that. And so, um, you know, um, so right now it's like I'm kind of doing a, a different thing where it's like I'm using uh, the background uh, to basically define the sh help me define the shape of the hand because there's some things that are not exactly uh, you know correct in my drawing or quote unquote correct so um, you know you can do that a lot uh, you know for you know whoever is learning oil paints and stuff like that I I oftentimes um, you know, will use uh, the background to help me uh, redefine the shape of the hand, so or shape of the subject. You know, it might make it a little bit hard to see, but I mean, uh, you know, as, if you can see in the reference, you know, mm -hmm. surrounded basically the hand shape is surrounded by black anyway. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping that it will look okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. No, it's a great hand. That hand shows life. I like it. <laughs> and you can get pretty brushy with this. You know, I guess there's a little pinky there I didn't see. You know, even with something like the pinky right here, you know, um, I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I just did a mark just to like kind You're of just. Suggesting. Yeah. Yeah, just to in order to like get like yeah, the the placement of it. Um I don't want to worry so much about the detail or rendering it specifically right now. I can worry about that later. And also it's like uh you know, for me, um and maybe this is also for you as well. Uh you know, when you're when you have um you know, some things in greater detail and some things in lesser detail, you can create like a lot of uh, atmospheric space, which mm -hmm. is, you know, really important, I think, in all, uh, you know, genres, not just um, landscapes or, you know, or you know, portraits or anything like that. It's you know, interesting to have some sort of atmospheric space. This is such a great lesson. I, it really is. I, you're going to make me do this after we're done. Okay. <laughs> I might just get the charcoals out, but you're going to make. I've got a ton of um, drawing paper here. I just may. Um, I just may have to do my hand. Oh, I hope you do. I hope you. I, <laughs> you should send me. Send it to me. I would love to see I it. I will. I I yeah. enjoy this. I just did. Um, I'm I'm into wildlife, and and I okay. like. So the reason why I'm very attracted to your work is I love how you, you know, you know exactly the light spot to bring out and then lose a lot. And mm -hmm. that's the attractiveness I love about your work. I love that, um, how it fades into the, the background and uh -huh. you just, you just render what's really important about the, the painting. Uh, that's uh, once again, that's very, really kind of you to say. I mean, I, I really appreciate that. I, you know, I mean, one of the things that uh, was the hardest thing for me is um, kind of uh, learning what, what to leave out, actually. Um, because, I mean, I, I used to be a, a classical realist. I mean, that was my, my, yeah. uh, my background, but I mean, um, you know, it uh, it wasn't incredibly fulfilling just to be, uh, you know, a classical realist. So it's like I wanted to 
add some sort of expression into my painting. And so, uh, you know, that's when, you know, I just, just started experimenting around and, you know, really trying to just get to the heart of what I'm seeing as opposed to rendering everything. Um, so, I mean, I, I appreciate hearing uh, what, you're, what, what you said. Well, it is hard, you know, especially when um, I'm a, a realistic painter and um, it's, it, it is hard to eliminate detail. And I yeah. find that difficult. And you're explaining it and doing it, it, it perfect for the viewers to understand because that is a hard thing if you're so detailed to um, when do I leave it out? Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree, you know. I mean, the uh, I, I think for myself, like one of the things that really creates style is basically when you stop, you know, know it when you stop on a painting or when your stopping point is. I mean, that kind of is what is, from what my observation is, is the um, sort of the defining characteristic of a lot of people's style. And um, so, I mean, you know, I highly encourage uh, whoever is getting into art to really experimental experiment around uh, when they feel their stopping point is with uh, with their uh, work, because I mean, it, that will forge your style. It de it definitely will. Okay, so let me take a break here, and then okay. you can. Well, we'll come back. You'll have about twelve minutes left, and okay. we will. Um, and then you can figure out what else you're going to uh, show us. Okay, sounds good. So let me talk about Realism Live. I'm part of the faculty. Calvin Lai is part of the faculty, and there's 20 other artists on there. It, 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 talk about learning. I mean, it, it's, it's this coming Wednesday. Talk about learning in the comfort of your own studio or your own home, your own space, and maybe you can't get out there in the field or you can't travel or something. This is perfect. Not only that, you're going to gain your artist family. Your artist family is going to grow. They can answer your questions. We're very hands-on, well, not that's, you know, over the internet about what we'll explain to you and all that. So, you know, it, this is a great, great thing. And if you plug Baron, B-A-R-O-N, is your uh, code, you'll get 10% off, but it's coming up and you, um, you'll wanna see this. So let's watch the video. Welcome to Realism Live. Welcome to Realism Live. Welcome to Realism Live. This is my lesson for Realism Live. Welcome to today's lesson. Welcome to my class. I hope you enjoy this demo. Let's get started. You have an opportunity to go to an art conference online and this is it. For the next three days, we're here to make you better and to inspire you. You're going to experience massive growth this week. This is the best possible opportunity to really push yourself to the next level. You can do this. I absolutely loved it. More than met any expectations. I keep finding myself going, this is truly amazing. I learn something new every time. It's therapy. Just when you think it can't get any better, it really does. It just keeps getting better. This experience has been a game changer, not only for your art, but for one's life. People who can't travel or afford to travel or go to workshops out there are able to learn from all these different artists right from our own studios and homes. What you're going to get over the next few days will blow your mind, but it's also going to take you further than you ever thought. There's landscape painting, there's portraits, there's still life. Like I'm getting a little bit of everything and I am very excited about that. You guys are giving me more tools to put in my toolbox. I appreciate certain things on a whole new level. I get all these great artists teaching me all these do new things, but I get to sleep in my own bed tonight. So many fantastic artists, master artists who are sharing all their expertise. The artists, what they bring is just shocking. It's just the whole day just flew through and it's so fast because it's so much to take in. You have the best of the best out there. So many of these people you can't even get to. 
you cannot get to them. They all have so much to offer and everything's so different. Everybody today has been amazing, all in their own different ways. I learned so much. Every single artist I have an aha moment from. I learned something from everybody today. And I've been painting for 36 years. I just loved it. I've never done this before. It's so new to me. It's been class. And new friends too. There's people here that I have become very good friends with. To meet other people in this. So the total immersion is definitely the way to go. Really incredible to see people connect with them. Go to every breakout room, talk to everybody, try every single thing. Even if you think you can't do it, put that aside. It just has been a real lifesaver through this whole time. I have just incredibly appreciated all you've done. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, it's, 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 it's a great connecting space, Realism Live. So I hope I see you there. Now let's go back to Calvin and... Let's... Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, basically now we're basically at the stage where we can just start kind of correcting details and emphasizing some things. Now, I'm, uh, my goal, of course, is not to not to render the hand completely real. Um, it's more of just to kind of get the expression of it and the feel of it. And so, when I look at this right now, you can I can see some inconsistencies from this compared to the um, reference, but that's okay. You know, this is kind of the point where it's like you can start start making sure that everything is um well i mean closer closer to to the way that you want it and so i just want to nudge this a little bit closer towards the uh, uh the reference so. and i'm still using really broad strokes i see that i like that yeah i i I'll, i'm a, i'm a big fan of of um you know uh, using trying to find or trying to uh, make a mark that kind of is enough um i remember when i was in the metropolitan museum of art i saw a john singer sergeant painting and uh, i never understood john singer sergeant until i saw his work and uh, you know i mean he was a master of just you know using one mark to basically say a lot <laughs> to say a lot correct yeah. and so i mean basically i you know i I've, I've been trying to follow <laughs> that as much as possible but of course he was a master you know and um so yeah but i mean in terms of this you know you can just try to get different angles the different angles right i mean this knuckle is kind of interesting because it kind of goes you know down and then towards the right a little bit so with just those two marks you already said a whole lot yeah <laughs> no just forming the hand yeah the um thank you i uh yeah it's it's amazing actually what you can do with very minimal amount you know um, I mean, once again, I mean, everyone has their own style of how to render things. And um, I'm not one to dictate style at all. Uh, I, I've never um, really resonated with the teachers that I had that really kind of dictated style. And so uh, for myself, you know, I mean, uh, I'm just much more interested in developing you know, people's ability to create their own style. And so um, I emphasize that a lot with 
with my so i mean but for me uh, i mean um uh, just to finish that thought i mean uh, so some people you know in, in terms of the way they would render it is you know a lot of blending and a lot of uh, or glazing or or however they're doing it for me it, you know i just try to keep it um, i don't want to say simple but i mean uh economical when it comes to my my mark making I'm loving this black and white study. Thanks. I I, uh, I love working in black and white. It's for me. It's it's really, uh, you know, it's it's a real joy. To, I don't know. I just like the. I like working in monochromatic actually in general, whether it's black and white or just like you know shade of blue or something. And just in terms of like. Um, oil painting technique it's kind of at this point uh you know for people who are, are learning the technique you know uh at this point where you really kind of want to load your brush a little bit more um because at first i was using a lot of thinner right to make it, it was, flow a little bit yeah and it was very um yeah thin what you yeah, said very thin but now it's like i'm using the majority of just uh you know just paint um and um and uh, it, and it's you know because I have you know my first layer down uh, you know with the hand and everything like that it's gliding a lot easier on the surface because of that you know I mean the reason why it was so draggy beforehand and the reason why you need more thinner beforehand is because there's nothing on the surface really so it's like really draggy but now it's like all the oils paint is here and everything like that and you know i can um get away with like having thicker thicker paint you know i'm a big proponent of uh the rule of um thick over thin <laughs> thick over thin is that what you said yeah thick over thin yeah And you're subtly changing the values there, which is nice. Yeah, just, uh, um, you know, that's one of also the advantages of working with black and white. It's this, the, the subtle change in the values is something you can achieve. Um, the color, you can do that too. Um, it's, uh, of course, just another factor to think about. And so I'm also using the black again to kind of correct the drawing because the thumb is kind of hidden by the accordion a little bit just touch you know it's a little bit more up like that so these little observations you can do you know when uh you know as as you progress further and that is uh I'm, i mean not to toot my own horn but i mean like the, the observations are only possible by in my opinion for me was only possible uh by simplifying everything first so i can kind of create i guess you could say a map of where everything else is supposed to go and so that for me once again you know i just have to reiterate you know i i think it's really important to um, minimize a lot of detail in the beginning in order to successfully render whatever you're doing that was great to say i you know i think that's important for the viewers to hear that so that was mm -hmm. great i mean um yeah, I don't know uh, if this was your experience, um, but you know, when I first started painting, it's I, I did not understand the whole concept of uh, rendering, uh, you know, um, minimizing and how that would help. And I just tried to paint what I saw, like meticulously, um, you know, like I was drawing it, and um, it didn't quite work for me. So. I really had to sort of change change things around for my approach in order to get it to work. Well, I worked in a um, a company, so I, I um, 
took a few classes right out of high school. So I, I in in the time I had off, I would take a few classes at the art center, and one of them was life life drawing, you know, from life, and yeah. uh, I loved that one. And talk about you said this earlier about you know quick studies and all that. That is so uh, that's so good, you know, to train your brain to capture it real quick. And in landscape painting, you have to do that just because the light changes. Oh yeah, sure. So all that is helpful, you know, it, it, what you're doing, it's all, it, it, it will translate over into whatever genre you want to paint. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm really glad to hear you say that because I mean, I, I, I mean, that's a great thing to point out because landscape painting, when I've done it, uh, I mean, yeah, you really found that I, ha I had to, it would, I had to be very quick. Yes. You know? And, and everything. I mean, when I'm outside and doing it. And so it's, and also it kind of, it gives you like a sense of um, energy too, when you're, when you're doing it. And that's a, you know, can be felt in the, in the piece. Um, whenever I'm doing a large work, I, I try to go very quickly in the beginning, uh, just to try to instill some sense of energy into it. Um, right, and to fill that canvas up as quick as you can, because I yeah. find it intimidating. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I, I, it's interesting that you say that because I mean, for me, it's like there's a lot in art that's difficult because it's intimidating, you know. And so, um, you know, I mean, you really should try to set yourself up with success and try to cut out, you know, as much intimidating factors as you can uh for me like in this one of them was the color aspect um you know uh for you you know i mean when you, what you just said you know just filling that up so you don't have, you're not staring at a blank canvas right yeah. okay so um yeah this is just pretty much coming together the way that uh you know, I mean, I don't think I want to carry it too much further. Uh, well, you have about five minutes left. Would you like okay. to say something, you know, about, you know, what's important or, or helpful for the viewers? Um, I think, like, one of the things, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of wrapping up, you know, knowing when to stop or something like that is... Uh, it, is something that because right now it's like I'm feeling I'm uh it's about time getting close to time even if it was regardless about uh you know the amount of time that I had you know just being able to uh, develop a sense of when to stop the painting uh, or when you feel that something is done um you know is really important and so it's like uh, I've spent a lot of time like trying to develop that or hone that uh, feeling inside of myself. Um, not saying I get it right all the time, but, uh, you know, I feel that I understand a little bit more when my stopping point is. And, um, I, I really highly encourage like, uh, everyone to tr really try to develop that sense within themselves, you know, and once again, right. that does read style. So, well, that's if they get on your your website and look, especially you know your some of your figurative work. I love the way you lost some edges. Uh, it, you can definitely, um, you you definitely know your style and where you want to go. And of course, as we as we age and go on, you know, we evolve somewhat. But yeah, your you know, it's um, I I love how you captured the um, uh, the figure and mm. the figure in motion. And uh, just look at this hand. It's in. It's it's playing um, an instrument, but yet it's it's um, uh, it looks like it's in motion, and yet it's it's um, a portrait. Uh, how you know? It's it's um, I'm trying to come up with the right words there. I'm loving this. You know what edge I really like? Mm. <laughs> when you get to the wrist, the hand gets to the ridge, and it's sort of like looks like it fades right in. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great underneath yeah the under i love that that's nice to hear um 
Yeah, I mean, you're. I I, I love what you're saying. Actually, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the things, the points you're bringing up. <laughs> not, not that you're, you know. Uh, but I mean, the points that you're bringing up, because I mean, uh, it just reminds me of, of really important things, which is edges, you know, edges are super important. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. And you said that better than I, I sometimes I'm trying to get out what I what's in this head, because right now, just watching you, there's a traffic jam up here of what <laughs> I, I want to go draw next or do next. But it's um, the edges are important. Yes. And I, I guess what I was trying to say, I, lo I love the way you lost the edges in some of your paintings. I oh, love that. That's awesome. No, thank you. No. Um, yeah, and now it's like basically, you know, you can put some highlights. I always put like the highlights last. Um, yeah. It's with the thickest amount of paint. And, um, I mean, I'm not going to render every vein or anything like everything like that, but I mean, just to kind of get like an extra sense of volume. Yeah, but that really sparks it. What you're doing right now really sparks it. it it's it's uh, uh, I always uh, and um, I mean, um, maybe you found this with your practice as well. But I mean, it's 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 I think it's always important to, um, you know, lay the, um, you know, the whites or the lights you know, last just so that they're sitting on top of everything and really brings everything out. Yeah. And I don't want to do too much, you know, with that. I, I want to leave it like a little bit brushy still. Yeah. Um, just to kind of you know, get, get like a sense of energy and motion in there. I mean, one thing about um, my style uh, in terms of capturing motion, I, I think I, I give the illusion of motion by, by not rendering everything completely detailed. Um, you know, I mean, I, I like to try to activate a person's mind in order to fill in details if there's uh, needs to be details to be filled in. Well, Calvin, this is uh, this has been so enjoyable. I I can't say enough. Everybody, go read his bio. I enjoyed reading it so much, and um, your statement, your artist statement, um, very very well done. But your your portfolio of works on your website are amazing. So, are you on um, like Instagram or Facebook where we can see you more? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram. And um, my Instagram handle is just Calvin Lie Art. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So it's just my name with art at the end of it. <laughs> so pretty much Instagram and website are the ways that I, I communicate with the world <laughs> right now. You know. I, um, I love it. This has been so enjoyable. Very educational. I'm going. I'm going to pick up my charcoal sticks after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I get inspired by all of this. I mean, it's just, um, uh, I think the viewers are just going to have a great time with this. You said exactly what they need to hear. And drawing is important. Value is important. Do these black and white sketches. This is great. Yeah. That, uh, well, I mean, I, um, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm very happy to, to have done this. And it was really enjoyable talking to you. Oh, this is fun. I've been blessed that Eric let me uh, sit in for him while he was gone. Because yeah. um, even as, you know, it, 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 we all love, we, we all get inspired from each other. Mm. So this, yeah. is, this has been fun for me. Yeah. Well, I'll, enjoy I mean, it. I'll definitely, uh, I look forward to checking out your lesson. And uh, yeah, you know, thank you so much for having me. You know, I mean, it was really great to talk with you. I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for being our guest. And thanks for inspiring me. <laughs> Have a right. great day. You too. So I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. So get out some black and white paper or paper and charcoal or paint or whatever. I think you should try this. It's a great lesson. It's, it's great to get the creative mind going. And uh, we all need that. So I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you, Eric, for letting me host all this. And tune in Wednesday for Realism Live. It's not too late to sign up. You'll have fun. And you get to see Calvin here do his thing, too. So anyway, 
thanks again and i thank everybody for letting me host